So far, we've studied conics where their center was at the origin. Now we want to take a look at conics where their center is not at the origin and think about these in terms of shifts either up, down, left, or right. The table below describes how changing H or K will affect the shift that happens for the center of the conic section. Example 9 says sketch the graph of the following equations. So part A we have x plus 1 squared over 9 plus y minus 3 squared over 16 equals 1. Now in order to graph these we have to become very familiar with the different types of equations because we have to identify which type of conic section this is. So this is an example of an ellipse. And we want to identify the center of the ellipse. And the center is going to be at h, which in this case is negative 1, comma k, which in this case is 3. So I'm going to go ahead and plot that on my grid. So here's my y-axis, here's my x-axis. Negative 1, comma 3 is right there. So we also have to remember that a is greater than b, which is greater than 0, which tells us that the 16 has to be our a squared value, and then the 9 has to be our b squared value. So a squared is equal to 16, and b squared is equal to 9. So if we take the square root of both sides, we end up getting a is equal to 4 and we get b is equal to 3. So that means that vertically, we're going to move up and down four units to get our vertices. So we'll start at the center and move up 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's a vertex. And then we move down 4 from the center, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I also want to plot my co-vertices, and we get those by starting at the center and then moving left and right our b value. So 1, 2, 3, there's a co-vertex right there, and then if we move left, 1, 2, 3, there is a co-vertex right there. And by connecting these ordered pairs, that will give us the ellipse that we are looking for. Now. That's all it said to do in the question. It just wanted us to sketch the graph. But let's say we also wanted to locate the foci. The foci are going to be located at the same x value of the center. So it's going to be negative 1, comma, plus or minus, sorry, uh, the y value, which is 3, plus or minus our c value. So we need to figure out c. And the equation that we use to figure out c is c squared equals a squared minus b squared. And that's going to be 16 minus 9. So c squared equals 7. And if we take the square root of both sides, we end up getting c is equal to the square root of 7. So that means that our foci are located at negative 1, 3, plus or minus the square root of 7. And it might be helpful to know that the square root of 7 is approximately 2.7. So if I start at the center and I move up 2.7, that's going to be about right here. And if I move down 2.7, that's going to be about right there. So those are my foci. It didn't ask for the foci, but just wanted to identify them so that you know how to do that. All right, so example B wants us to graph the equation x squared plus 6x plus 12y plus 9 equals 0. And this is not in standard form of any of the conic sections. So we actually have to do some manipulating of this equation. 
And I'm going to rewrite this as x squared plus 6x, and then leave some space and close off my parentheses, plus 12y plus 9 is equal to 0. Now, in order to get this into a form that we're going to recognize to figure out what conic section this is, we need to complete the square. And how that's going to work is we're going to take this value, which is our b value, and divide it by 2. And then we're going to square that. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. And then we're going to square that, which is 9. So I am now going to add a 9 here. However, I can't just randomly add 9 out of nowhere. I need to compensate for that by subtracting 9 over here. So that balances out, and eventually, if I wanted, I could really think about this as plus 9 and minus 9. If I combine those, that results in 0, and that returns the original equation that I had. But by doing it this way, that allows us to rewrite x squared plus 6x plus 9. We can factor that into x plus 3 squared, and then we have plus 12y. This 9 and this minus 9 will cancel out, and we'll be left with equals 0. From here, I can subtract 12y on both sides, and we're going to get x plus 3 quantity squared is equal to negative 12y. Now this is in a form that we might be able to recognize, and hopefully you're able to recognize that this is going to be an example of a parabola. Now, because normally our parabola is x squared on this side, but now we have x plus 3 squared, that means that our vertex is going to be located at negative 3 comma 0 instead of at the origin. So my vertex is going to be right here, and then we can decide whether our parabola is going to face upward or downward based on the p-value. So we know that this is equal to 4py, so we can take our negative 12 and set that equal to 4p. If we do that, we get 4p is equal to negative 12. We would divide both sides by 4, and we would get p equals negative 3. Now, because p is negative, that means that our graph or parabola is going to be facing downwards. And if p equals negative 3, then our directrix is going to be the line y equals positive 3. So I'm going to go ahead and plot that. Here's my y-axis, here's my x-axis. I know that my focus is going to be at negative 3, negative 3. So I'm starting at the vertex and then moving down 3 units. The other thing that's going to help us graph this is the focal diameter. which is equal to the absolute value of 4 times p. And we know that the absolute value of negative 12 is positive 12. So we are going to need to go 6 units to the right and 6 units to the left from the focus. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 will land us right there. And then we want to start at the focus and go left six units. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's going to be kind of off the, off the grid, but our parabola is going to look something like that. And that completes example B for us. I'm just going to quickly write out that our vertex is located at negative 3, comma, 0. And I'll box some of the important characteristics. But other than that, this concludes example B.